Good morning again, guys. Still Monday. Figured I'd uh, put this one or record this one a little earlier today because it's supposed to warm up a bit this after, or about later this morning to the point where I can get outside and get some work done. And I'm going to take advantage of that in January if I can. So the chances of me being around the computer here uh, later on during the day are slim. So it's no big surprise that we know we're going into a food crisis. I don't have to tell you guys that. You know, you can watch a million videos on food crises. You can go to the grocery store and figure it out. All right. But so what I want to come up with is what we are expected to see big shortages on this year and some solutions, okay? Some things that you can do now. And that's the one thing that I always find that's important is we can talk about the problems all we want, but we have to come up with ways to prep for them, okay, to overcome. So I want to go through 10 things, consumable items, that are expected to be or already are in short supply in 2023 and what we can do now, mid-January, to overcome it, all right? and maybe figure out a way to help yourself a little bit in the process. So let's go through these. Number one, beef. I don't have to tell you about the price of beef. We've talked before about the cattle culling that happened last year because of the drought in Texas. You know, Texas produces 14% of the beef supply. You know, a lot of other beef we get from Argentina. Yeah, they got problems down there too, all right? A lot politically, economically. So, you know, we can expect beef to get more and more and more expensive because it's going to be scarce. I would highly, highly suggest, and I know this is difficult for some people, but price this stuff out. Go on Craigslist, go on Facebook Marketplace, wherever. I mean, a freezer, a seven cubic foot freezer at Walmart is 200 bucks, okay? Get with a couple of friends. Get with family. Buy a side of beef. Buy a, buy a half a cow. Buy a quarter of a cow. Get it and split it, okay? We were driving yesterday, and I passed one of these places that has a sign on the side of the road. It says, do you know where your beef comes from? Ours comes from here. And, you know, it's a guy who's got a cattle ranch local or whatever. And he had to sign out that he was selling ground beef, or his beef was $5.99 a pound. And I'm going, dude ain't selling anything. You can find, at least around me, and I'm assuming you're going to be able to find this in a lot of places in the country, beef for, on the hoof, five bucks a pound or less. Okay, I was able to get it for around four. That's not only the ground beef, guys. That's the steaks, that's the roasts, that's the ribs, that's the brisket, that's everything, okay? So if you want a little diversity in there, get with a couple of people. Maybe a couple of you guys on here are close. Go on the freesteading channel and look in your state, the state list, and maybe you can find somebody close and get together and see if you can find beef, all right? If you don't, you're going to need to find another protein source, don't count on chicken or pork to be another good protein source. The price of chicken is going through the roof. We're seeing the first case yesterday of bird flu transferred to people. Yeah, all right. Just saying, if you like to eat a burger every once in a while or a steak, that's the way to do it. Number two, lettuce. We talked about this one yesterday with the California flood. The prices you're seeing for lettuce right now are about as cheap as they're going to be this year. Okay. You get a lot of the winter crop of leafy greens that's grown in Arizona. The summer crop of leafy greens this year, forget it. Get your seeds, plant your lettuce. A lot of you guys talked about arrow gardens, uh, hydroponics, anything. Lettuce you can grow in the windowsill in the house. Get yourself some cut and come again lettuce, leaf lettuce. You grow it, you take a pair of scissors, you snip it off at the bottom, it grows back. You have a head of lettuce in your uh, refrigerator right now, cut the stem off, you know, what? you know, when you get the triangle, pop it out, you know, you pound it on the 
table and the stem comes out nice and neat, plant that. It'll grow. Okay. Number three, this one, don't hear anybody talking about beer. Guys, some of the girls like to have a beer in the summer when it's cold or when it's hot and you want something cold. Uh, beer shortage. Now, everybody say, well, gee, it was because of aluminum during uh, COVID. And that was true. You know, a lot of people were drinking from home, more beer, more beer cans. Okay. A lot of people drink beer from bottles. So you don't need to hear the, the aluminum thing. Gee, buy it in glass, right? That's not what's causing the problem. Believe it or not, you know where the shortage of beers come from? If you've bought beer at a store lately, you've seen the price. Price of beer has gone up about 30% here in the last six months. It's carbon dioxide. CO2, you know that thing they're trying to get rid of? There's a carbon dioxide shortage. Now, I did a video oh, a year or so ago about making your own beer. I would suggest if you're a beer drinker, Learning how to do this, because you can still get the little tablets that are carbon dioxide tabs. So I had to do a stop and go get it. This is what I'm talking about. These are carbonation drops to make beer with. Obviously, I have some because I brew my own sometimes, not all the time. Go get yourself a beer kit. What you will find very quickly, and I've mentioned the Mr. Beer Kit before, uh, what you will find is it's no more expensive to make your own beer at home than it is to go buy a case of Budweiser, all right? It's better beer, too, and it's kind of fun. It's also a good thing to have for an SHTF event because all of a sudden, if you have the equipment and you're the only one that has the ability to have beer in an SHTF event, think about what that could be as a barter item, okay? Next one, oranges. Vitamin C. Yes, I know people say there's other sources of vitamin C. I agree. There's plenty of them, all right? But oranges are a very good source of vitamin C. We all like to have our orange juice with breakfast, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you have a big issue with Florida and the orange crop getting wiped out, okay? In 2023, Florida is expected to produce 20 million boxes of oranges. It's a lot of oranges, right? It's 51% less than 2022, okay? You're already seeing the price of oranges in the store. They're about a buck an orange at this point. You want your orange juice? You might want to go buy some frozen concentrated orange juice and put it in that aforementioned freezer, okay? Because to give you an idea of how bad the orange crop is expected to be in 2023, they're expecting this 51% drop to be the biggest drop since 1913, over a hundred, this will be the worst orange crop in over a hundred years. Just saying. You want your oranges? The kids like orange juice for breakfast? Go buy yourself a bunch of frozen concentrated orange juice and put it away. Okay. Next one, cooking oil. This is another one. Get to the store and stock it because it ain't going to get cheap. Or it's already expensive, but it ain't going to, I mean, maybe if you're lucky, you can buy the generic bottle store brand of vegetable oil for two bucks, two and a half bucks, all right? But you figure oil seed comes from soybeans, sunflowers, peanuts, rapeseed, canola, whatever it would be, all right? 70% of the world's oil seed comes from Russia and Ukraine. Guess what? You think it's expensive now? If this gets bigger, this mobilization that's talked about in the spring, you know, Tanks don't go, oh, there's a farm. Let's not go through it. Won't end the story. Okay. If you're looking for something that you want to stockpile, stockpile vegetable oil. I will give you this as another idea. Vegetable oil in the liquid form is only good for maybe about nine months to a year. Go get yourself some vegetable shortening. Okay. Even the off brand of Crisco, that'll last three or four years. In a worst case scenario, you can make that into a candle as well. If you're not using, having th something like Crisco in your preps is a good longer term storage. It's not forever, but it's a good longer term thing to store, about eight bucks a can or whatever right now. But 
have a few of those. Butter. This one's kind of short. Uh, butter is expected to be in short supply for the first quarter of the year. Okay, why? First off, you have the aforementioned cow issue. Okay, but second off, there was a massive run on butter over the holidays. A lot of people used it for baking cookies and doing whatever. And the stores, the producers, whatever it is, don't have the raw materials, the milk, the cream, everything, to make the butter to make up for the, uh, the I don't want to say shortage, but the over-purchased amount of butter that we had during the holiday season. This one should be uh, relatively short-lived, say the first quarter of the year until they can ramp everything back up. Have some extra butter on hand, okay? Or, again, if you can make your own, there's a good idea. Making butter is not very difficult. Uh, there's plenty of videos online to watch to learn how to make your own butter, okay? If you can find the cream, make your own, okay? You can find the raw milk, make your own. You know somebody who's got a cow? Yeah, <laughs> you want to know them. Beef, butter, okay, go for it. Eggs, I don't have to talk about eggs. Like I said earlier, we've got the first case of bird flu in humans now. Uh, eggs, chicken, everything like that. It's not going to get cheaper. Keep an eye out for sales for powdered eggs, Augustin Farms powdered eggs, uh, egg whites, anything that you can find that not necessarily the, the regular egg in a shell. Maybe you're buying the powdered. Maybe you're buying the liquid form if it's cheaper. Figure it out. But right now we're seeing eggs at 40 to 50 cents per egg. Okay. Look for alternatives, you know, because again, you're going to need it not only for breakfast or whatever, but you're going to be doing a lot of baking if possible. Tomatoes. Get your seeds out. Okay. In a month or so, you're going to be starting to plant your tomatoes. You know, told you guys before, a third of the nation's vegetables and three quarters of, of the fruit comes from California. Told you yesterday about what's going on in California. The crops coming out of California are going to be crap this year. Fortunately, tomatoes are something that are relatively prolific and you can grow about anywhere in the country. I will also give you this as an idea with tomatoes or peppers or something like that. If you've got enough to grow, let's say, 10 pepper or 10 tomato plants, 10 pots, or your garden's big enough to put in 10, grow 30 and put a little sign out at the bottom of your driveway, tomato plants. Walmart was selling them for four or five bucks a plant that big last year, remember? Sell them for three bucks. Your neighbors might want to buy them. You've got heirloom tomato seeds. You sell 30 tomato plants at three bucks, there's 90 bucks. Now you can go pay for half that freezer I talked about before. Just saying, it's an idea. Last one, bread. This goes into wheat, flour, anything of the sort you're going to talk about. So cakes, pies, you name it. We have a big, big problem with grain still. We're using the supplies. Our supplies of grain are dwindling monthly, and it's not being replaced. You know what happened last year with the whole plain states and all the, the wheat. You know what's going on with the Texas winter wheat. That crop was killed. Okay, Flour is going to come, become very, very difficult. If you can find flour now, stock up on it. Five gallon, five gallon buckets and mylar bags, put away a couple of hundred pounds of flour. I know everybody's going to go, I don't use that much flour. You don't now because you can go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. Okay. You ever seen how much flour it takes to make a loaf of bread? You're talking a couple of cups, you know, two to four cups of flour to make a loaf of bread. Just saying, you're going to go through a lot of flour. That is something to definitely stock up on. You like fried chicken, you like fried fish, anything like that. Breading, guess what? That's flour. Some people use cornmeal. I get it. Okay. But those are 10 things that are expected to be in very short supply or get prohibitively expensive this year and some solutions on how to get ahead of it this year. I got to get to work. Pinball out.